book of Lamentations, if you look at the first part of it, it's lament, a, a broken heart, a sigh, crying, like Jeremiah the prophet did in the book before. Lamentations has always been an interesting book to me. It has five chapters, and it goes 22, 22, 66, 22, 22. Isn't that something? 22 verses in chapter 1, 22 verses in chapter 2, right in the middle of it, 66, and then 22, 22. I'm sure there's something to that that nobody's found yet. But in Lamentations chapter 3, I want us to look at a, at a little phrase here this morning. I'd like to be an encouragement to you today. My message to you today is a message of encouraging and a promise of God. Are you here this morning and you need encouraging from God's word? This is for you. Lamentations 3.22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen. Isn't that the truth? Lord, in mercy. Listen, if you ever get to thinking you're good, you've done lied to yourself. It's a mercy of God that every one of us ain't done gone dead, dead and in hell. It is the Lord's mercies because his compassions fail not. His compassions fail not. I want to preach this morning on the subject, Jesus never fails. One of the most comforting, solid, bedrock, foundational beliefs of a Christian is that our God in heaven will not fail us. That's, that's one of the bedrock, bottom, solid foundations of the entire Christian faith that Jesus never failed. I'm going to tell you something, people. We're living in some very serious, scary, trying time. We are that close this morning from that little crazy boy over there in Korea punching the wrong button or being provoked. And don't you doubt for a second, demons ain't working and all that high and those world leaders fussing back and forth. From having World War III, we know there are at least three more Big wars in the future. Revelation 6, uh, Revelation 16, Revelation at the end there when the Lord comes back and fire comes down from heaven and devours them. And we are in terrible times. We don't know what we may face. We may face tremendous persecution before this thing's over. We're no better than the Christians in Sudan. We're no better than the ones in Iraq and Iran and, and, and North Africa and places that have trusted the Lord and suffered for their faith. Now, you're going to need this when that time comes, and that is Jesus never failed. I want to tell you this morning, he won't fail you in disappointment. The Lord won't fail you in disappointment. We all go through times in our life when we're disappointed. I mean, you get your hopes up, you think something's going to work out, and it don't work out. Or you think, I finally got uh, my bills caught up, everything, and then everything falls through. Something happens to disappoint you. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6, they, Moses had a big disappointment. One of the greatest men in the Bible, the meekest man in the Bible, outside of Jesus himself, was Moses. And Moses, the Bible says, well, this man, he, he had disappointment. When it come right down to the end of his life, he had, he had walked with God 80 years, led the children of Israel 40 long years. And when it come right down to going in the promised land, God wouldn't let him go in. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He said, I'm going to let you look over there and see it, but you can't go in because he lost his temper back there and, and God, that was God's uh, judgment on him, not allowed to go into the promised land. And I want to tell you something, folks. Down just have it. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Moses looked out there. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, you know what a lot of people have done? They said, well, if that's the way, I, if that's what I get for serving you 40 years, I've been faith. That's, that's a modern-day Christian. Uh, we think God owes us something. All that. You know what Moses did? He turned around there and looked at Joshua and the children of Israel, and Moses cried. He said, Joshua, be strong, buddy. You go in there and do it. The Lord will not 
fail you. That's Deuteronomy chapter number 31 and verse 6. He said, he won't fail you in disappointment. He said, I ain't going to get to go in, but I deserve it. He took his place. He took his punishment. He said, I deserve it, but that's all right. I'll see you guys when you're on the other side over there when the rest of you get in. And Moses realized that the Lord does not fail you when you're disappointed. I'm telling you, when you're real disappointed, I, the, the devil can get in the front door if you ain't careful. He'll get in there and say, look here, you, you've done tried to do right and serve God, and then your kid's mean as a devil. Or you, or you tried to serve the Lord, and you took a stand, and then your husband left you. Or then you tried to stand for God and you lost your job or here you stand for God and listen the Lord never promised us bad things wouldn't happen we're never promised in this book that we won't be hurt and disappointed never ever ever but I'll tell you one thing he said I'll be right there with you I will not fail you I'll go with you amen so that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper I'll not fear what men can do to you Job the book of Job 42 chapters the book of Job a, cha a picture of the great tribulation 42 months Job on the ground seven days and seven nights a picture of the Jewish remnant persecuted during the seven year tribulation period Job persecuted Persecuted by the devil himself, like the devil will persecute uh, them in the tribulation period, personally. And Job looked down, he buried ten kids one day, ten caskets, one, two, three, four. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine sores all over his body, balls coming out? I mean, I'm on all his jaw, and he hadn't even done nothing wrong. He had served God and done right and paid his tithes and faithful to church. I mean, he done everything you're supposed to do, and everything went wrong for Job. I'm telling you that because we got this, we got this idea in America that if we serve God, he's going to make everything all right and we're going to have an easy life. No, that ain't the way it works. Now, God does bless us and he has blessed us and thank God he has. But I'm telling you, Job lost everything and you know what he said? You've heard me preach it over and over and over. He said, the Lord gave me this stuff. The Lord took it away. Uh, 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 we'll receive evil to hand of God, not good only. We deserve it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God turned around and give Job twice as much on down the road because Job realized that Jesus never failed in disappointment. Let me say secondly this morning, he will not fail you in difficulty. He will not fail you in difficulty. He's the foundation of my salvation. I'm telling you, sometimes it gets rough. Old Daniel over there in chapter 3, the Bible said uh, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego there in Daniel chapter 3, they took their stand. And they said, all right, Lord, we're going to stand for you and serve you. Like me and you have tried to do, we've took our stand. We've identified ourselves. We let anybody in Burke County know we're a Christian. Anybody in the world can know. I mean, good night. I'm, 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 uh, I'm on, on, on the Internet, and that will never be pulled back. So it's worldwide known whose side I'm on, and it's, that's fine with me. I'm on the Lord's side and don't care who knows it. I ain't seen nothing no better than him and there ain't nothing no better than him. And I'm going to tell you, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego took their stand and they stood there that day and they stood before the king. And the king said, I told you, had them brought in there and he said, I told you, uh, you're going in the fiery furnace uh, for breaking the law. And then we'll see what your God does for you then. You know, the devil's talking through somebody. You, look where God, look what God's done for you. And you you done all this stuff, try to serve God, and look how bad you've got it. And I like to add, I answer Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, they said, all right, king, listen, let's just cut the chase here. There ain't no use in negotiating. There ain't nothing to pray about. Our mind done made up a long time ago back there. And they said, look, our God is able. He made this world. He made the stars. He made the planets. He made the sun and the moon and everything, rocks and mountains and trees. He's able to deliver us, and he will deliver us out of your hand. But I'm going to tell you something. If he don't, if he don't, and he lets us burn up, we're still not going to serve you. And, buddy, they took their stand. It was difficult. That wasn't easy. Put yourself in that place. And Shadrach, they throwed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. The Lord... The Lord didn't stop them from going in the fire. But about the time they wound up in the fire, they went, here goes, here goes. Now, this is going to hurt. But, Lord, you know we're trying to do right. Here it goes. And they threw them in that fire, and them flames started coming up around them. 
and they thought the air conditioning got turned on and it burned off them ropes that was on them like that and about that time somebody come walking by you know who that was that was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament who came to stand with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the fire I'm telling you something brother he'll cross over a dispensation he hadn't even got here yet and said excuse me Lord uh, Father I'm going down there a few minutes three of my boys need help and he got down there and walked in the fire with them people he walked in the fire with them turn me down please brother Noah Amen. Listen to me this morning. I don't want to knock y'all out the back door, but I want to get loud and I'm holding back. I'm telling you this morning, people, he will not fail you in difficulty when it gets rough, when it gets hard, when you think you're not going to make it, when you think I can't go on another day. You watch standing somewhere in the shadows. You'll find Jesus. He'll not fail us in difficulty. Hallelujah. Now You may not need that right now, but you're going to. You're going to do when you're in a hospital. You're going to when you're at the funeral home. You're going to uh, when the doctor shakes his head and said, I got bad news. He will not fail you in difficulty. Through disease, through famine, through earthquake, through blizzard, through drought, through fire, he did not fail them. Adoniram Judson, you should know who that is. If you, you should study a little church history. And Adoniram Judson was a famous missionary to Burma. Burma. In, on, in, around India and he went over there and preached and Adoniram Judson they said preached six years and never even had a convert can you imagine and he didn't even really want to go but he said God led him to go he preached six years with not one convert you know, I find sometimes we go a little while and don't nobody get saved. I start getting worried. I start saying, Lord, what's wrong? God, is it me? You, God, is it us? Lord, help. I want to see people get saved. I can't imagine going to a heathen country, preaching six years, and not one person saved. And Adoniram Judson said, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he said, but i tell you this. He, uh, he, he didn't say, I'm in God's will. He didn't say, where's God? You know what he said? He said, there is a God in heaven that will fulfill all his promises. And Adoniram Judson stayed faithful in his difficult work and God blessed it and honored it. And today, there's thousands of converts and hundreds of churches in India and Burma because of the mission and work and the faithfulness of Adoniram Judson. Ladies and gentlemen, just because you can't feel the Lord don't mean he's not there. Just because you ain't got goosebumps going up and down your back does not mean he's forsaken you. Let me tell you what he said. He said his compassions fail not. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank God he's still with us today. Number three, he will not fail you in your duty. He will not fail you in your duty. He said, Lo, I am with you always. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Lo, I am with you always. He said, If you'll go and take this gospel, you know, I am with you. That's what I tell our bus workers. I said, You're not alone. You might have to go visit by yourself sometime. That's not, not the best. You always want at least two if you can. But sometimes people have to go alone. We've had bus workers go alone. And ladies and gentlemen, when they go up there, you know what I tell them? When you knock on that door, Remember, the Lord said, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the world. I am with you. The Lord working with them. He will not fail you in your duty. You say, well, preacher, I'm a Sunday school teacher, and I teach and teach and teach, and it just seems like nothing ever takes place. Or I just don't know if I'm doing a good job. I'm telling you, buddy, the Lord will be with you in your duty. You're a mother here this morning, and you say, I try my best to raise my kids right. God knows my heart. I'm not perfect, but I try. I try to tell them the right thing to do. I try to teach them the right way to go, and then sometimes I see the way they act, and it just feels like I'm, I don't know. Where's God? I'll tell you where he's at. He's right beside you. He will not fail you doing your duty, doing your duty. You ain't seen the end yet. It's not over yet. The final results are not in yet. Uh, the doctor's report ain't come back yet. He will not fail you in your duty. I'll never forget many of you were here, there over in the old building. When we first started our bus ministry, 
that when we first started bus ministry, we raised $6,000. Money started just, people started giving, and we bought four buses for $1,500 each. We got a deal from the school system over there, and they, they wanted, I think, $2,500 apiece for them, and we made them an offer. I said, I'll give you $6,000 for four of them. And the man said, all right. He said, if you can get that much money, bring it over here, and you got four buses. We did. And, boy, we got them buses, and we had one bus, and Mighty Mike, Brother Mike, Miss Phyllis's husband, who's done gone home to be with the Lord, he's up there in heaven this morning saying, come on, Brother Danny. Come on, Brother Danny. Like that. And uh, he's up there cheering me on this morning right now. And Brother Mike, uh, he was going to drive the bus. And we had a meeting over there in the old building. I think we had 18 people on a Sunday night said, I want to help work on that bus. 18 people working one bus route. I said, glory to God, we'll fill it up the first week. They went out on Saturday. I mean, Linda Houghton, they went all over Morgan and knocking on doors. We went here, we went there, we went. I was, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. There, there's, there's nothing much thrills me anymore on Sunday morning than to see a bus pull in and people just start piling. I, I'm telling you, you never get tired of that. Glory to God. I mean, that's like throwing gas on a fire in a preacher's soul. I mean, this Vicky had 40 on hers this morning. I mean, just jumping off there. Here they come, here they come. Little that darlings, and, uh, and they all come down through there, jumping off, and you think, glory to God, <laughs> hallelujah, amen, and you know what, I tell you, we looked that morning, and I'll never forget, everybody's so excited, Lord, bless our bus route, bless our bus route, Lord, hallelujah, we're in the bus ministry, we got there that morning, and looked around, looked around, looked around, and I'll never forget, we were standing outside the building, it was about five minutes till ten, somebody said, here he comes, we seen that old bus coming down up from Ingalls over there on Carbon City Road coming up to and boy we sitting there we sitting there sitting there and I, I I looked I couldn't see no heads but his I think somebody was on there with him I don't know who it was TJ Randy one well, I don't know who, not, you might have been on there you what you didn't even ride and I thought you know sometimes them buses will fool you they'll pull up and it looks like ain't nobody on there because they're so little and they'll start popping up I said they're gonna start popping up Pop up. Pop up. There was not one kid on that bus. One kid. I thought, and immediately the devil jumped on my shoulder and said, See there, you're not even supposed to be doing this. Have you ever had the devil tell you something like that? You know, when you really, you really try to do your duty and it just should not. You think you've got your kid trained to do something, and he does the total opposite. You think you've got your husband. That's another story. <laughs> you can forget that battle, I can tell you, right now. Try to change him. Try to change that piece of wood right there. Anyway, Mike said, nobody didn't come, brother. I said, man. I said, all right, we're going to do it again next Saturday. We went out, worked the next Saturday, worked the next Saturday, worked the next Saturday, and sure enough, that second Sunday, I think we had three or four. And I thought, Phew, praise God. I mean, I've done convinced people to run buses. We put lots of $6,000 into this, money for fuel, tags, insurance. And I, I'm telling you, it was discouraging. And you know what the Lord did? The Lord began to work, and the Lord began to work. And the Lord began to work. And how many thousands of kids. Until we have, we've had a big day of over 300 of the own buses. Just on buses. Not counting our regular congregation. I'm telling you this morning, he'll not fail you in your duty. Amen. He will not fail you in your duty. He will not fail you in your duty. I'm telling you, there's a God in heaven that will fulfill his promises. Just like Adoniram Judson said, there's a God in heaven, people, that will and does and can fulfill his promises. Number four. Number four. He will not fail you in death. He will not fail you in death. You know, a lot of times we skip over the promises of God. My Bible, my real Bible that you see me with all the time, I had to send it off. It's falling apart and I, and I have to send it off to a bookbinding company to have it fixed. And I got this one. I'm using this one that Carrie bought me a long time ago. And there's a man one time, his mama 
always told him, she said, now, son, you read the Bible. You read the Bible. And he, well, he didn't ever read the Bible. He wasn't interested in it. And when she died, she left a little will and said, all of my possessions I leave to my, my family after my funeral expenses have been covered and paid and everything. Whatever's left in my account goes to my son and my daughter. And, what, and they split that around. And he said, and, and uh, notes in the Bible. And he didn't, didn't read it and didn't read it and didn't read it and didn't read it. And he's having a hard time. He's having such a hard time. He couldn't pay his bills. His life wasn't going right. And one day he said, you know what? I'm just going to get Mama's Bible out. And he got through there and he started looking through it. And there was a bank note. And there was a bank note. And there was a bank note. And Mama had tucked $5,000 in that Bible. And he'd laid there all them years. And that guy struggling, couldn't pay his bills. And right there had it in it all along. And I'm going to tell you this morning, you listen to me, y'all. There's so many people. You know what your problem is? You leave that thing laying. You leave that thing laying. And right there's the treasure of God and the answer to your problem. You just leave it laying. Look in there. Get in there. They something. You say, boy, if I could find $5,000 in my Bible, I'd do it. Let's say something in there a lot better than $5,000. $5,000 can't hold your hand when you're dying. $5,000 can't give you peace and assurance when you're on that deathbed. I'm telling you this morning, it'll not fail you in death. I believe this. I believe this this morning. I believe the same Jesus that saved me when I was 18 years old. I'm, uh, I like that song. There's a song with a title that I'm preaching on this morning. You might as well get thee behind me, Satan. You cannot prevail because Jesus never fails. Amen? He's the eye of the storm. He's Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. I'm telling you, brother, standing somewhere in the shadows, what about I must tell Jesus? Never forget, going through a hard time one time, very rough, and back back when I that building was building that building in Marion, you remember? I told you about how them them thank trusts about fell on me and almost killed me, and you, I could write you a book on stuff that happened. Amazing, and what what amazes me is you can look back and you can see God and the devil, God and the devil. God and the devil, God and the devil, all the way through. And I remember one night I was real discouraged, and I'd been off somewhere to preach one night. And it was about 11, 12 o'clock at night, and I come through Marion, and I stopped to see if I got anything done while I was gone. You know, you turn your head, the workers, you know how that goes. Uh, or, or put something, they'll either not do nothing or do something wrong. And uh, uh, anybody got people working for you, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what? I walked in there that night, and I was about to bust out crying. And I started singing, and I don't ever do, I do once in a while, but not in downtown. I don't just start singing. And I throwed my hands up and said, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. Boy, I'm telling you about on the second line of that. I'm telling you, I felt him. He beside me, he said, Danny, not in these ears, but in my heart. He said, I will not fail you. And I'm telling you that means more to me than anything this world has to offer because they will come when I have to leave this world. I'm counting on him. I'm counting on him to be there uh, for me and not fail me when I'm dying. I'll not fail you. I asked somebody one time, somebody said, I ain't got dying grace. The man said, well, you ain't dying. God will give you dying grace when you are dying. That's right. This week, I stayed. I'll tell you a story now. I'm going to hurry. In the mountains of Kentucky, I'm telling you, and I ain't talking hills, I'm talking straight up mountains, and I loved it. The further back in the mountains, the better I like it. I like the people, I like the way they think, the way they, they I, I mean, it's coal mining country. And the only thing I don't like about it is that you can't get nowhere. I mean, there ain't no interstate, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. No, I had no cell phone service for three days. Hallelujah. Some of you would have died. You'd have, you'd have died of, of uh, del- you went into delirium DTs or something. Man, I loved it. No phone, no text for three days. I borrowed the pastor's work phone and called my wife. And I made a couple other calls and got some texts to go through when we'd leave to go to town. We went way up this holler called Beaver Dam Road. And the road gets littler, and the road gets littler, and the road gets littler, 
And you turn left on Beaver Dam Road, and what them people did back in the old days, there's mountains on each side, straight up, straight up, and a creek. So you made the road, you know, by the creek. And the road just follows the creek up through there like that, crosses it a couple times, goes back under it, and went up through there and went up through there. The road kept getting smaller, and it's a public road. If you meet somebody on that road, somebody got to pull over in the grass or back up. And that happened a couple of times uh, to me this week. Man, who you going to find? The preacher said, now, now uh, he said, now, Brother Danny, he said, I'm going to put you in mom's house over here. My mom went home to be with the Lord about a year ago. He said, is that all right? I said, sure, brother, it's fine. He took me over. It looked like a house my grandma lived in. Little old white house with a front on it, little front porch, just a little old white siding house. Went in there, and she still, still her glasses was laying in there, and her, her stuff and uh, uh, Afghans and blankets and stuff around that she had or made or something. And I walked in there, and he said, Now, is this all right? I said, Sure, Brother Joe. This is fine. He said, Now, if you need anything, i put you some snacks in the refrigerator. He said, uh, and, and I said, Well, here, a big old creek running right in front of the house. And I said, hallelujah, glory to God. I mean, no, no airplanes, no cars, no trucks going down the road. No cell phone can't even find you. Hallelujah. I said, man, this is, this is the way people are supposed to live. And you know what he told me? He said, mama got this house when she's 20 years old. 20 years old. She just died last year. He said, my mom, her name was Beatrice. Beatrice, like I ain't B, and Beatrice. And he, he said, my mom and daddy. He said, my daddy went up this creek and he bought this land. And he said, daddy built this house by an old lamp and a carbide saw and lamp at night. Worked in the coal mines all day and come and built this house with a hand saw and a hammer by himself at night. And he said, my kids started to be born, me, my brother, my sister, I got three, several kids. And he said, I said, how much land they got? And he said, well, on this side of the creek, we got 100 acres. I said, what? 100 acres? He said, now, on that side of the creek, we got 80. And he said, my mom, she said, my mom never, he said, my mom never had no education. Mom went to the eighth grade in school. And he said, mom loved the Lord. My daddy was a Pentecostal preacher. So there was a young preacher, his wife, bunch of kids, living up that creek, no government help, no food stamp, no nothing. You, you made a living or you starved to death. And your family didn't help you. And he said, we raised those kids in there, and daddy preached and mama prayed, and daddy preached and mama prayed. He said, that land over there, Brother Danny, across the creek, it looked just like this, straight up, big old hill. They got cows on, on, and pastures and barns and, and everything. And he said, he said, you know what my mom did? He said, my mom bought that piece of land right over there. Uh, he said, she gave about $1,000 for it. I said, how much land there? And he said, 80 acres, $1,000 for 80 acres. 80 acres. I said, how'd she do it? He said, my mom didn't go to school, but she's a real smart businesswoman. He said, these old boys lived up here, and a lot of people didn't have a car. He said, these boys really, really wanted a car bad. This was back in the, about 1940. And she, he said, mama found out them boys wanted a car. And she said, uh, I'll give you $1,000 for that land. And they wanted a car so bad, they took that $1,000 and she got the land. They deeded it to her. So it makes her 180 acres, or almost 200 almost, all together. And he said, it wasn't just a day or two, them boys come up the road in a brand new car that they bought with that money. And she got the land. And he said, when mom died, daddy died. His daddy died with a heart attack. He said, mama prayed, and mama prayed. He said, he got out and sinned, played in a rock band. He said, my brother's out and sinned. He said, mama prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. I'm saying this for all you mothers in here this morning. He said, Mama prayed and we got wicked. Mama prayed and we got full of the devil. And he said, Mama finally got sick. And he said, when Mama got sick, it got bad. I said, how old was your mom when she died? He said, 96. 96. Never, they didn't go to the doctor. Lived off fat back and country ham. Didn't have no blood pressure out. Worked in, I'm telling you, something's weird about our generation, ain't it? I think it's air conditioning, and I love it, but I think not sweating is what's killing us. 
I, that's what I think. And you know what? He said, Mom is 96 years old and died a year ago, preacher. And he said, the weirdest thing started happening. He said, all of a sudden, one day, my brother-in-law come in and got under conviction. He lived right across the road down there. said, he got saved. I said, really? And he said, then, my sister-in-law lives up across the road here. She got saved. I said, really? I said, when did this happen? He said, three days before Mama died. Her prayers, after all them years, 40 years she prayed for them people. Seen no change. And three days before she died, them prayers got answered, and she didn't even know it. She didn't even never know her prayers got answered. Let me tell you something about Jesus, people. Here's what the Lord do. Here's a woman laying there and the devil jumping on her saying, all them years you've wasted praying. You now your kid's going there. Her son, the last son that wasn't saved, got saved right after she died. Can you imagine laying there on your deathbed and the devil saying, you're not, your, your kids ain't saved. Your kid's going to hell. You live for God all your life. You, tried, you prayed 40 years and ain't going to hell. And she died like that and woke up in heaven and the angel come over and said, I got a little news for you, Beatrice. What's that? Uh, down there just a few days before you died, uh, they got saved, and your boy's going to get saved here in about a week or two. And I'm just, that's why we couldn't, we couldn't tell you down there. Your body couldn't take it. And I'm telling you, you had to get that new body and shout all over heaven. And I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? Yeah, that's, that's what you don't find in this modern-day Christianity. That old woman loved God, served God, raised that family right. Taught them about the, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Prayed with her kids. She didn't go to honky-tonking. Lived in the same house 76 years. Lived in that house. Never got out of that holler. Never went to Hollywood. Never had been to a professional anything. Never got out of there. But bless the Lord, she's in heaven this morning shouting the victory, praising the Lord. And brother, she found out what I'm trying to tell you. Jesus never failed. He never, ever fails. D.L. Moody, as he was dying, his last few days on this earth, they told him, they said, Mr. Moody, you don't have but a few days to live. And he looked back at him and he said, one of these days, somebody's going to tell you that D.L. Moody has died. Don't believe a word of it. I'll be more alive then than I've ever been before. He said, I was born once, 1837, in the flesh. I was born the second time, 1856, in the spirit. And I know my Lord will be there waiting on me. He'll hold my hand as over death's river I go. Look, people, they've been trying to bring peace on this earth all these years. Do we have peace in the world right now? It's worse than it's ever been. There's more Christians being martyred now they say than ever. There's less peace. Does our country have peace this morning? It's tore all to pieces. I'm glad we can look the one up there and say, Jesus never fails. Let's stand by our head.